G'day, chaps. Tis I, Clumpuncher139. Over the years, I've since come to enjoy CinemaSin style content less and less. At this point, I enjoy criticisms of the content more than the originals. Sure, some of them have good points and jokes, but more often than not, they're poorly thought out, unfunny messes that don't do the original creations justice. And yeah, I'm personally guilty of this. Please don't watch that old video. And have since come around to view it as some of my worst work but I still leave it up because I don't believe in deleting the past. Later down the line, I made a critique of all the everything wrong with Arkham City videos, because by that point I had seen channels like The Birdman and liked their style enough to defend my favorite game. There were pretty common themes among all the videos, and that probably contributed to the ludicrously long 50 minute runtime. I knew I wanted to do another because I was really proud of the effort I put into making that when I was less experienced. Now I feel like I can do another, and here we are. Since I wanted to defend Arkham Knight as much as possible, I wanted to do the Arkham Knight videos next, only to find that there are only two in existence. Both of them are by creators covered in the first video, Char i5 and Dartigan. I know for a fact that there was at least one more, but I guess the gaming sin channel was deleted off the face of the internet and GCN never did one. So we're left with only two. That doesn't mean this video will be any shorter than the Arkham City one. In fact, the script I have written is the exact same length as the Arkham City script, despite having half the channels to go through. The videos were about the same length as their city counterparts, so that can really only mean these videos are not going to be great. That said, do not go attacking the original videos or their creators just because I bash their points. Heck, one of these videos already has one of the worst like-dislike ratios I've ever seen, it doesn't need to be worse for them. All that intro stuff out of the way? Let's get to the sins. Do you really think Scarecrow's crazy enough to detonate a chemical weapon in Gotham? Are you serious? This is Jonathan Crane, the guy that has been working with fear-inducing neurotoxins just to see people freak out for research. What part of that doesn't suggest he wouldn't use his research as a super weapon? It's kind of a running theme to ask if supervillains are crazy enough to do what they plot says they're doing. Oracle did it with Joker's Titans in Asylum. They obviously know they're crazy enough to do it, it's more about asking if this is truly the reality they're living in when this happens. Finally! It only took us four games to introduce the Batmobile as a mechanic. Disregarding the fact that everyone was clamoring for the Batmobile in earlier games, including it in Asylum and City just wouldn't make sense. Asylum was too condensed to have a car to drive around, and City was entirely walled off from civilization to the point that the Batwing had to drop everything and jet off without a second notice. And Arkham Origins was just a rush game to keep hyping the franchise alive while Knight was in development, so they couldn't have done it there. I was just talking to Robin. I think you should too. Bruce, you need me out there. We can find Scarecrow faster together. What you're working on is more important, Tim. Can wait one night. Let me help. I've got this under control. <sighs> okay. Listen, try checking in once in a while. We're partners, remember? Are you? I mean, so far we've never really seen you two working together. Maybe because you didn't play Arkham Origins multiplayer. Sure, that was Jason Todd Robin, but my point still stands. Wait a minute. You were the one Sims video to cover Harley Quinn's Revenge, so you obviously seen Bruce and Tim work together there. Couldn't go one fucking game without using the Joker, could you? Sinning Arkham Knight Joker. That's worth these many sins. Batman jump scare. Sinning jump scares from a company known for making great jump scares. All right, we need to go. There could be a clue, something that will lead us to her. I'll follow. Stay in contact. Jim, I need you to stay focused. It's dangerous out there. Drive slow and let me deal with any trouble. Just get us there in one piece, Batman. We're running out of time. Why didn't we have Jim in the backseat from the beginning? It would have been much safer. Which is exactly why Jim gets in the backseat. What you see Jim undergoing is something probably called parental adrenaline. Something happens to your kids, so you're full of energy to do something in retaliation. Even if Batman told Jim to get in the Batmobile back at the GCPD, he certainly wouldn't have. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to undress her first? Hey, if they're going to reference something, they'd better stick to the source material. 
This is not the actual scene we all know from The Killing Joke, nor is it Joker's recollection of the event. This is Batman's mind playing tricks on him, showing a more concise version of events to put him on edge and slowly break him. Oh god, no. How the hell did you get out of the Batmobile? Um, I don't know, maybe Batman opened the back remotely like he does for everyone else he puts back there? She works for you? This is all your fault. I will find her. Look, I know you're upset over some deranged lunatic kidnapping your daughter, and yeah, Batman sort of deserved that, but you gotta have balls or be a flat-out idiot to straight-up punch Batman in the face. You got lucky, Gordon. Not many people do that and walk away unscathed. Dude, Batman is responsible, and he acknowledges that. And he sure as hell isn't going to hurt Gordon, someone who's been by his side since the very beginning. Plus, are you just forgetting the doctor from Arkham City that hit him with a lead pipe? That's way more dangerous than a basic punch, and he doesn't do squat to her, even when it does hit him. Now that I think about it, how did Scarecrow know to go after your IT department? I mean, I had no idea she worked for you when I shot her. I just got lucky. You know, Joker brings up a good point. Barbara was Batgirl before she became Oracle. Joker paralyzes her and all of a sudden Batgirl disappears? Kinda hard to not put two and two together. I guess it's also not hard to put together Dick Grayson leaving Gotham for Bloodhaven, meanwhile Robin simultaneously disappears and a new vigilante appears in Bloodhaven. People don't notice minuscule details unless they're seen in hindsight. Good evening, Mr. Wayne. Upload waveform for analysis. Now I've waited long enough. Batman dies. Tonight. Okay, this. This is something I never understood. If you have a sample of the Arkham Knight's voice, why not filter the sample so you can get his real voice and run a voice print match? You have the technology! He may have the technology, but do you have any idea how hard it is to descramble altered voices? Even with the technology to do so, it's going to take an astronomical amount of time that none of his allies have to waste. Everyone's constantly doing something for Batman this evening, so trying to get one of them to start descrambling the voice would be nearly impossible. The only one that probably could is Oracle, and she disappeared before Batman really cared about who the knight was. Look at me! I'm amazing! Oh god, so much wrong with Batman sounding and moving like the Joker. It's almost like such an image is meant to make you uncomfortable with the thought of Joker taking over Batman's mind, thus making you scared for the end result of this game. Yeah, you see it now. The horror behind the glass. The monster that will be your end. Unless you pick up that gun. I know Batman still hopped up on Fear Toxin, but he saw Joker slide the gun to Barbara, right? Even with the Fear Toxin, he should know that's not possible, right? First, not removing a sin for this excellent scene. Second, I think it should be pretty clear that Bruce isn't going to be thinking clearly in this situation. Think about it. You see one of your best friends behind a glass wall under the effects of a toxin that makes them see you as nothing more than a monster. You see that friend scared enough to shoot at you and kill themselves at the sight of you. Nobody would be thinking clearly out of the probability of that situation. Heck, I bet a decent number of players completely disregarded Joker sliding the gun over because they thought this game had the balls to kill off of a beloved character like Oracle. And I should trust you. Why? Because without your help, every plant in this city will die. Okay, real talk? Poison Ivy is the most gullible, most easy to manipulate character in the Batman universe. Just threaten to hurt plants or say that plants will die and she'll practically do anything. She won't even question if it's true or not. Except... It is true. Without her natural immunity to Scarecrow's toxin and her helping clear it in the future, every plant would have been killed by the gas cloud. Plus, rewind to Batman threatening to burn every plant in Gotham. She rolls her eyes at the remark because she's heard it too many times. Listen to me very carefully. You need to lock down that room. We can't let the infected get out. How exactly does Henry Adams have a way of communicating with Batman, and more importantly, why doesn't Batman question it? This is clearly Henry just using the Bat computer. Notice how the camera angle and general screen layout is identical when Batman and Robin are rounding up the Jokers, and he calls Henry, who is at the computer when they're trying to get charisma. My best guess is that since Henry isn't considered a threat, he was given at least partial access to the Bat computer by Robin in the event something like an intrusion happened. We know he has some access because of Harley Quinn's tapes in this game, where she seemed to be communicating with Henry. Open. Voice print failure. Access denied. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice try, bad freak! 
Harley's changed the voice code access. How? Wouldn't she need to have an approved voice to change the voice code access in the first place? Or just access to the back computer, which she probably has, thanks to Henry? Oh, come on. You think you're different because you never killed anyone? News flash! You killed me! I was there, remember? You destroyed my cure right in front of me. <laughs> Watch me choke on my last laugh! Considering this is all Batman's psyche, does this mean that he feels guilty about Joker's death? He was there! He should know that Joker was the one who injected himself with Titan, got a disease because of it, had Batman make a cure and Harley steal the cure, only to stab Batman's shoulder once he had the cure back in his hand, making him drop it and waste it. So basically, Joker killed Joker! Everything you said was correct, yet you call this a sin. This is Batman feeling guilty that he couldn't save Joker. This is the fear toxin slowly trying to convince Batman that he's no better than the Joker, even though he knows that's not true. Anyway. When he's done with you chumps, me and Bats will have this place all to ourselves. So get out there and make him show you how much he wants me. <laughs> I know that Christina Bell is a woman, so saying that Batman wants her and vice versa isn't creepy, but you gotta remember, she's hosting one of Joker's personalities, meaning that Joker didn't just have an obsession with Batman, but a romantic obsession with Batman, which is creepy. Uh, not that homosexuality is creepy, it's just that it's Joker, so it is creepy. You know what? Editing this out. Saying Joker is creepy and calling it a sin. There's pretty much always a bit of subtle romanticism between various Batman and Jokers. Heck, it's basically front and center in the Lego Batman movie. As much as I love this part of the game, because, well, let's face it, it's freaking Mark Hamill's Joker singing a pretty good song to Batman, summing up the past few game's events, let's face it, at its core elements, it's still a Joker singing to Batman. It's ridiculous. Sending something ridiculous for being ridiculous. Have you forgotten what character you're talking about, mate? The Joker? You killed them, didn't you, Henry? <laughs> oh, Bats! You're so easy! With a hairline and a hairstyle like that, shame on you if you didn't see this coming. Why does Henry's hair immediately determine seeing a twist coming? Are you saying we all should have seen the twist of Bane knowing Batman's identity and origins because he's smarter in that game? Just because something looks like a hint doesn't mean it is. Activating jailbreak protocol. Oh, I guess we now know who reprogrammed your security. Okay, we know who, but we still don't really know how. You were inside the cell most of the time, and I'm still kind of convinced you'd need an approved voice sample to change the voice recognition. Go to. See my reasons above. No, 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 you are not going to do this. Tosh, there's plenty of room for both of us in here, but it looks a bit cramped in there. I'm sorry. They're taking off their masks with Harley Quinn still in their line of sight. Why exactly? Because this isn't what really happens. This is Batman's mind playing tricks on him once again, telling him not to get into the cell. No way out. Oh, screw you, Arkham Knight. I blew you up like seven times. Four times, but who's counting? How long did you wait before replacing me, huh? A month? A week? I trusted you! And you just left me to die! Whoa, 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 wait a sec. Depending on what story this is following, he didn't leave you to die. You ran off by yourself trying to find your birth mom, and he got there just after you were killed. Plus, he didn't make Tim Drake Robin until after he, Alfred, and Nightwing trained him over the course of several months. Plus, you were dead way before Bruce even met Tim. This is a different storyline of events not directly based off of the comics. That videotape scene we saw back in the movie studios, that was an actual tape Joker sent Batman. Jason was killed by a gunshot after months of torture from Joker. Meanwhile, Jason in the comics is killed by an explosion moments before Batman finds him. We genuinely don't know the time frame between Jason's capture and Tim's recruitment, but we can assume it happened before the tape was recorded. All the timelines match up, it's just your fault for not seeing that this was different from the source material. I'm sorry. You left me to rot in that abandoned wing of Arkham for over a year! Is that why you called yourself the Arkham Knight? Because other than that, the name really doesn't make much sense. A quick search on the wiki would give you your answer. 
After the tape was filmed, Harley had her own go with Jason, brainwashing him further into wanting to kill Batman. At this point, she ended up calling him Arkham's Knight in Shining Armor. It was that name, coupled with the Arkham Asylum and City incidents of the previous years, which he knew would haunt Batman, thus giving him his name. Once I understood your greatest fear, controlling you was simple. You blame yourself for her condition. But that doesn't really make much sense. Barbara was the one in the toxin chamber, so only she should have been affected. Did you anticipate that the toxin in Batman was going to linger long enough from when he left the clock tower to when he got to Chinatown that he would see her kill herself? Even so, how would you know that that's what he would see? That makes no sense. If she was actually in the toxin chamber, then she passed out at a very convenient time, just after Batman saw her shoot herself. Imagine if Batman saw that, but still heard her freaking out. Okay, many things wrong with this in here. Firstly, he isn't talking about Batman, he's talking about Gordon. Gordon is the one controlled by his fear in this scenario, as he was the one who got Batman to this rooftop under Scarecrow's instruction. Second, Barbara was never in the gas chamber. It is completely in Batman's mind. If you listen to the Knight's interview tapes, you'll know Jason specifically said that nobody could lay a hand on her or they were a dead man. Scarecrow abided by these rules until the Knight abandoned him. Joke Mobile. Sending the Joker Mobile in a Joker based hallucination. We interrupt Arkham Knight to bring you the latest Call of Duty, Joker Mod. Sending the first person Joker scene. That's worth these many sins. Well. Or actually, you know what? It might be the latest indie horror game. I'm not quite sure. Sending it twice. That's worth double sins. <laughs> jump scare man bat. Sinning the greatest jump scare in a non-horror game. Yes, of course. Sorry. So uh, what we've done is merge the DNA of Desmodus Rotundus. Uh, sorry, the, the vampire bat into the human chain. This breakthrough could, it will, prevent and cure deafness in all humanity. Whoa, 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 hold up. To find the cure to deafness, you had to fuse the genes of a bat with those of a human? That's like fusing the genes of an eagle and a human to cure blindness. Would that make him manbird? Girlhawk? This is a completely irrelevant analogy. What, are you now going to send Rick and Morty for having Rick think mantis DNA would stop everyone from wanting to mate with Morty? Science isn't always right. That's why there's a method to it. So they never even tested it out before. Then why would they assume that it would even work? This literally is the test. That's why they're recording it in the first place. Cash, I've captured Dr. Langstrom and administered the cure. I need you to prep an isolation chamber. I'm bringing him in. Does Cash even know what the hell Batman's talking about? He just kind of ran into Man Bat. I don't think Cash even knows who Dr. Langstrom is, much less that Batman was chasing him down. The GCPD is aware of all of Batman's findings throughout the city. Gotham's Most Wanted is kept up to date on Batman's HUD, as well as the GCPD monitor as soon as you get through the metal detector. Spare me this sermon. What took you? I'm kidding. Looks like I got my story. This is it, Batman. This could get me back in the game. My own show. Hey, first guest, how about it? The real Batman. Your story! Okay, we stopped Deacon Blackfire. That's all good and well. But did we really need to free Jack Ryder? Couldn't we just leave him tied up? Maybe an asshole hero would have done that, but Batman makes it his mission to save everyone. See Joker in literally every game. <laughs> Random ding for pigs singing? Seriously? The Order has foreseen it. The time has come to pass the mantle to another warrior. To me. Azrael wanting to succeed Batman never really made sense to me. I mean, unless he wears the Batman costume himself, people aren't going to be afraid of him right away. And even then, they'd know right off the bat that he's not the same Batman that everyone knows. So what if the hero isn't the same? If they're effective at their job, criminals will be kept at bay. If you can prove your abilities, when the time is right, I'll consider it. But first, you must show you are worthy. Weird that Batman won't just say that to some random dude that follows him around and started making burning bat symbols on rooftops. Yeah, a guy who's already shown to be dedicated enough to climb up on rooftops and follow him throughout Arkham City and now again in Arkham Knight. This level of dedication would be admirable to Batman, so he just needs this guy to prove his worth. 
Plus, considering he already knows he won't survive the night, any number of successors is a good number. This just makes recruiting that much easier. I decide how this works, not you. Every moment you waste, Gotham falls deeper into the abyss. Make your decision fast, or she will be lost forever. I'm just now realizing that Azrael lets himself fall from rooftops. How does he do that? His cape is literally just blind. I mean, to be fair, Batman shouldn't be able to fly or glide at all, but just letting yourself fall with a cape like Azrael's? He has his own grapple gun, so it's not like he's falling to his certain death. Why would a Batman visit an abandoned orphanage? Eddie, sweetie, you confuse me with Robin. The big guy and I aren't all that close. You'd think she's kidding, but yeah, Robin doesn't really do much except for Batman's bidding in the series. Either that or he's getting kidnapped because of Batman himself. Considering you were the only Sins channel to cover Harley Quinn's revenge, I'd have thought you'd remember Robin literally saving Batman's life and the lives of many cops in that story. Even then, what do you expect of a sidekick? You already saw what happened when Jason went on his own, why would he ever let Tim off on his own after seeing that? I know you will not beat me this time. It is utterly impossible. You cannot do it. I have won already! I will mock your attempts to solve my conundrums. I will stand triumphant over your bloodied corpse. And as the dim light fades for good in your tiny dullard's mind, your final thought will be how I have bested you. What would happen if someone killed Batman before the Riddler did? Would he go insane because it wasn't him that bested Batman? I mean, even more insane than he already is? Yes. Yeah, no, he tossed her way harder than that. Her ribs should be shattered. Considering she can survive a fall from the highest rooftops with little more than her legs as cushioning, nah, she's fine. Through the rhyming words we tumble, where villains toil and psyches crumble. <laughs> I kind of don't get what's going on here. How did Tetch get Batman to fight inside the book? Was it drugs? I bet it was drugs. Close hypnosis. He's hypnotized and incapacitated whenever Tetch takes over. Pretty simple stuff. And of course, I'm still wondering why you call this a sin. Go back to him. Destroy that foul machine and let the... thing that was once my father finally die. I'm no killer. Good, because you're not killing Raish. You're just letting him die. It's totally not the same. Time. That's literally the point the other characters are making. That's exactly how Nyssa tries to convince him, and it's how Alfred tries to persuade him when he gets back to the hospital. More hateful. More crazed. I tremble to imagine what he would have become if this... What did you want the detonator for if Batman was gonna blow it up anyway? The honor of doing it yourself? Proof that they're on the same side. Even though Nyssa is the more reasonable member of the Al Ghul family, she still wants to take over the League and is an assassin. Sure, she says she won't be like her father, but actions speak louder than words. Restored to full strength, there's no telling what he'll do, or who he might hurt. Is preventing some ungodly resurrection truly the same as taking a life? That's what I'm saying! Then why are you sinning it? Victor. They wanted me to join them, help fight you. I refused, so they took her. Seriously, is taking Nora Freeze that goddamn easy? It seems like everybody does it. Maybe the fact that she's immobile and Freeze is pretty irrational have something to do with that. They took Nora because of you. You literally just said that they took her because you didn't join their cause. They took Nora because you refused to be an asshole. Seeing as Freeze threw a fit at Batman not helping find Nora in City, equating not joining the cause to kill him to him being responsible for losing Nora is pretty justified. It's done. Gotham is safe. Is it? I mean, yeah, you pretty much locked everyone up, but I'm pretty sure there are still thugs on the streets. And what if the scum of Gotham break out? Yeah, that's why police cars are sent out instantly to stop riots and round up as many criminals as possible. It's safe from the biggest threats that they needed Batman to stop. They have to do the rest to prove that they still have power over the city. What the hell? The f sinning this scene. That's worth these many sins. You 
two okay? We're good, Commissioner. You saved many lives tonight, including my own. Thank you. You're welcome. You sure you're okay, Batgirl? You know, it seems like this to make me wonder why Jim Gordon doesn't know who Robin and Batgirl are. Huh, Robin has pretty short hair and Batgirl has long red hair. My daughter and her boyfriend look like that. Come to think of it, they sound like them too. In situations of extreme stress, nobody is going to be thinking of putting two and two together when it doesn't immediately have relevance to said stress. Furthermore, most iterations of Gordon have it to where he doesn't care about who Batman is once they team up. Sure, he's certainly curious, but he knows that knowing the secret would only hurt people, and that same logic would probably apply to the rest of the Bat family. We don't have the facilities to contain someone like Poison Ivy. We just gotta hold her for a few more hours before she gets transferred to Black. <laughs> yeah, if she doesn't tear down the Bloodhaven Police Department first. What the hell is Poison Ivy even doing in Bloodhaven in the first place? What, did she get bored of Gotham? It's not like Gotham and Bloodhaven are exactly far apart. A quick Google search says that they're only about 10 to 15 miles apart. She could have easily been caught on the Gotham border by Bloodhaven police, hence why she'd be transferred back to Blackgate, a Gotham prison. Oh, if it were only this easy. What exactly are you sinning here? The fact that money doesn't transfer this easily? Considering how it also did this when Hush was transferring between accounts in the, his side mission, it's entirely possible the Arkhamverse has really fast wireless banking. So the boy becomes a man. Too bad it's short-lived. No, Tim! It wasn't brave coming here. It was stupid. You're not the bat. Never were, never will be. Tim, get ready. Sorry, kid. You can't do this all alone. Dude, what the f***? Just shoot him already! Holy shit, the humanity! Even when Two-Face has someone cornered, he always gives them a chance. That's just part of his psyche. He lives and dies by that coin. And heck, even if it landed on the good side, he'd probably slap it on his hand to get the side he wanted. Hey, boss! We're getting you out! You are? Where's Nightwing? Oh, he's right here. We thought you'd want to say hello. Oh, I did. Penguin falls for this. He fell for it the first time, so why wouldn't he? Besides, this interaction is hilarious. You can't pretend you didn't laugh. On another note, why didn't Bruce Wayne just buy Arkham Asylum and build it up properly? A lot of this could have been avoided under the right management. Gotham as a whole is corrupt, and even if the Asylum got the right funds, you know it wouldn't go to the right places. Just look at schools. They get so much funding, yet they almost always spend it in places that don't matter. If Arkham got more funding, they'd just find a way to make the inmates suffer more. Increase security, more pay for the doctors doing bad jobs, lots and lots of guns. You get the picture. Plus, if Bruce did buy Arkham Asylum, he would kind of be outing himself as Batman. Even if he is a philanthropist, buying up the one place Batman sends his rogues gallery to to try and fix it up would be a little suspicious. Despite being set in modern times, Gotham Diners remain stuck in the 1950s. Bruh, have you ever heard of Five and Diner? 50s diners exist literally everywhere. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt your dinner, Officer uh, Owens. But there's a guy smoking over there in the corner booth. If anyone was interested in why Gotham is such a crime-infested ghetto, it's because it's full of assholes like this that deserve a good mugging. This guy is sitting at the counter and figures the guy smoking at the other corner of the diner is a problem he just can't deal with right now. Firstly, this guy was sitting near the booth at the beginning of this cutscene. Second, you're telling me you'd have the balls to go up to some bum in a diner to ask him to quit smoking? I guarantee you'd either do the same thing or patiently wait for someone else to. This diner is filled with newspapers and missing persons posters that point towards future plot points. Why the frick is this a sin? That's called foreshadowing. In case you're unaware, literally all literature and media do this. Excuse me, sir. There's no smoking in here. Jump scare. This is a franchise known for its amazing jump scares outside of the horror genre. I guess you also hated Scarecrow, The Fake Crash, Man Bat, Tiny, see where I'm going with this? Rocksteady knows how to make good jump scares. How come this cop sees everyone else in the diner as a monster except the waitress? Dude, she is a monster. She's just still wearing her uniform. 
all the other people probably see Owens as a monster too, just wearing a police uniform. Gotham really needs to do something about all these giant TV billboards that supervillains are always hacking to send messages to Batman. Hell, how does Scarecrow hack all of them at the same time? They're connected to different buildings, meaning they're running off different servers and networks. Dude, he's hacking one billboard on one building. Notice how everyone looks at this one specific Jumbotron? If Scarecrow's fear toxin goes through everything, even gas masks, why does he bother wearing a gas mask? He ain't wearing a gas mask, Chief. That's just part of his costume. If it were a gas mask, you wouldn't be able to see his mouth, nose, or even eyes. Gotham, this is your only warning. Scarecrow's threat worked. Yesterday, there were 6.3 million people in Gotham City. Today, not so many. If all the civilians have evacuated, who exactly is left for Scarecrow to threaten? If he releases his fear toxin, the only people getting a dose are his own men and criminals who stayed behind. What exactly is the threat here? Dude, are you not paying attention to the most basic plot points of this game? Scarecrow is creating a bomb that will cover the entire East Coast in fear toxin. He wants the city to evacuate so nobody could interfere and to create more fear in the people, making them think they are temporarily safe. And in the event that the plan fails, he has a contingency. Spread toxin all across Gotham to show that Batman is not the savior the world thinks he is. Seriously, are you just going to keep sending the most basic plot points when there is so much else wrong with this game? Considering how far ahead of the curve Bat technology tends to be, this is one shitty looking cell phone. Small screen, thick and heavy build with sharp metal corners, bad UI, and not even a front facing camera. Which is weird because later we see Gordon using it to video chat with Batman. Sinning Bat phones. In a game where half the puzzles and combat encounters are dedicated to tanks, you spend double the time criticizing the integrity of a phone than at time it's actually on screen. Hey, Batman. Every damn time. You have to wonder about the logic of why Batman even does this. Is he thinking to himself about how funny it will be to troll Gordon by disappearing mid-sentence? Hell, what if Gordon has one more piece of important information to share? And how come Gordon still falls for this? It obviously happens enough for him to expect it. Just keep your eyes on him so Batman has to awkwardly turn and walk away like a normal person for once. <sighs> At this point, I'll be sending up to 75% of this video. This joke has been in Batman lore for longer than both of us have been alive. It is a staple of Batman media to have him disappear off the ledge while Gordon is talking. Who cares about the practicality of the situation? It looks cool and perfectly describes the character of Batman being on top of every situation. Were you expecting to find me, Batman? Supervillains sure do love to use multi-monitor setups for antagonizing Batman. And Scarecrow didn't even know Batman would show up here tonight. Alright, I'll give you the multi-monitor setup, but yeah he did. Scarecrow literally says, Were you expecting to find me, Batman? That literally tells you he knew Bats was coming. But only one of us is getting out of this cell. <laughs> Nothing like a little natural immunity. If Poison Ivy is immune to Scarecrow's toxin, why did he have her locked up in a gas chamber with it like it was a threat? And if she's the only thing that can possibly stop his toxin, why keep her alive? It's pretty obvious he doesn't know Ivy is immune to his toxin. It's that simple. He just keeps her alive because he expects her to rejoin his side at some point in the night. He literally wasted a night sending Harley to break her out of Blackgate because he knew she would be a valuable asset. He's not going to put that asset to waste just because she doesn't agree with him at that moment. I'm just going to sexily stretch now that the camera has an unobstructed view of my crotch. Half of her entire character is sexy. Don't question it. And what if I don't want to? Then I burn every plant in Gotham. Poison Ivy falls for the kind of empty threats a child would make says she falls for it while showing a clip of her rolling her eyes at the threat. Ivy knows Batman won't go out of his way to burn every single plant in Gotham, but decides to humor him anyway. Of all the places a crippled person can live, the top floor apartment of a clock tower is not one of them. Hmm. It's almost like technology has advanced in such a way to allow immobilized people to live in vertically based structures. I wonder what such a technology would be called and where they'd place it in this structure. Hmm. Hard to tell with the depth of field, but that looks awfully like a pair of Beats headphones. Or at least a DC version knockoff. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Bruce, you need me out there. We can find Scarecrow faster together. What you're working on is more important, Tim. We can wait one night. Let me help. I've got this under control. Even Batman doesn't want Robin in this game. Maybe if you understood the importance of Robin's work, you'd appreciate his absence more. Batman isn't exaggerating when he says what Robin is working on is more important than Scarecrow. If Robin doesn't get this cure, millions more will die than those by Scarecrow. 
time to die, old man. In death, he has nothing left to fear. Scarecrow keeps the Arkham Knight from killing Batman here. Okay, whatever. You go ahead and do your cliche villain thing where you can only kill the hero after you've broken him. Here's a ding for that. A ding for Scarecrow being a villain. Yep, that's how low we've dropped. You're thinking, who the hell is this guy? This is actually what the developers were hoping everyone was thinking, but everyone pretty much figured out he was Red Hood after the first trailer. Sending reality in a video about everything wrong with Arkham Knight. I fully, fully intend to kill you, but first, we're gonna make you suffer. If you know everything about Batman and how he operates as you claim, then you should know that this is the worst possible thing you could do and has screwed over every villain in Gotham at some point. And just a few minutes ago, you were ready to blow him away before Scarecrow stopped you. What exactly is the intended sin here? What other villains have tried to break Batman in the same vein as Scarecrow? Bane wanted to literally break the Bat in Arkham Origins by sheer brute force. Joker wanted to break the Bat in Asylum and City by having him break his one rule. In Asylum by having him go crazy, potentially killing Joker and others, and in City by letting Joker die by not giving him the cure. Scarecrow wants to show Batman how supposedly bad he is for the city he tries to save, and by showing the deaths of his allies. Even if others try to break the Batman, none of them have gone about it in a similar way to Scarecrow. We have the target. Just say the word and I'll end this now. Make up your damn mind. Do you want to make him suffer or kill him? Jason wants Batman dead. He's only going along with Scarecrow's plan because he gave him the opportunity to potentially kill Bruce. That's why he's trying to get confirmation from Scarecrow to end it now, but Scarecrow doesn't want to. It's not hard to follow, bud. How do I shut it down? You better hope it didn't have anything to do with the console you just smashed his head into. Those are lights, not buttons. Notice how they follow the average danger meter with green signaling little danger and red on the other end signaling high danger? It's not hard to follow, bud. Get out of there, now. Relax, no one knows I'm here. It's lines like that that get you kidnapped, especially if you're a woman. What the hell was the especially if you're a woman line for? What did that add to this already mediocre joke? Alternatively, what exactly was Scarecrow's plan here? How could he foresee that mentioning Barbara Gordon to Batman would make him unnecessarily turn around to contact her, letting him slip out the door in the few seconds Batman was distracted? Had Batman faced Scarecrow while contacting Barbara, Scarecrow's part of the game would be over. Okay, but what would he have done if he was facing Scarecrow? This screen clearly blocks the user's line of sight, which you'd know if you'd paid attention to any of the conversations in the actual game. He probably wouldn't even notice Scarecrow while frantically talking to Barbara. Even if he did notice Scarecrow getting up and leaving, he still has to actually warn Barbara. He can't just put it down and start chasing Scarecrow without warning her. Scarecrow took over Ace Chemicals so he could manufacture his toxin, which also means he would have been the one to manufacture the neutralizing agent that Batman used to stop the chemical weapon. Why would you create the only way to stop your evil plan in the midst of carrying out your evil plan? No, he didn't. He very clearly didn't create the neutralizing agent. Now, I don't understand chemistry or how a building knows the size of its own blast radius, but I'm assuming Ace has a contingency for self-destruct scenarios where it has a universal agent to dull the blast. <laughs> Miss me. Hey, they brought back Mark Hamill to voice Joker. Unlike in Arkham Origins where Troy Baker did it. That's worth taking off a sin. Good on you for actually having the balls to remove a sin, but implying Troy Baker wasn't amazing in Arkham Origins. That's worth these many sins. Before it killed him, Joker sent his infected blood out to all the hospitals in the state. I know, we tracked it all down. Yeah, about that. I'm still wondering how you cured that since the last of the cure was destroyed in Arkham City. Am I going to have to wiki this to get a clear answer? This will be the only time I bring up my theory in this video, but just know it's going to be worth these many sins. Just for fun, let's compare the plot of this game to the plot of Arkham City. A supervillain who's obsessed with Batman and his identity and also specializes in human psychology takes over a section of Gotham, turning it into a criminal playground. Batman is infected with something from the Joker and is hoping to find a cure. Congrats guys on recycling the plot of Arkham City. Hell, that's pretty close to the plot of Arkham Asylum when I think about it. Since that game is about a supervillain who specializes in mind games taking over an island of Gotham and turning it into a criminal playground. Which is all just a pretense for infecting Batman with something that forces Batman to search for an antidote. I just blew your mind. You sure as hell didn't blow my mind. These are such base level comparisons, it's not even funny. You forget to mention the extra supervillain who knows every detail about Batman's fighting style and tactics who's actively out to kill him. How a mastermind is attempting to purge Gotham of all criminals in a single night through mass murder. How the police force is slowly trying to regain their grip on a city overrun with crooks and terrorists. How one man is locked on an island after an easy capturing of his arch nemesis. 
how Joker is not the only one that infects Batman, but simply invades his mind because of Batman's own psychology. Notice how you could tell which game I was talking about with each example despite never explicitly stating it? And hell, even if these games were somehow recycling their plots, so what? Why fix what isn't broken? Together, we're going to give this city what it deserves! A new Batman. A better Batman. I hope you're not talking about Ben Affleck's Batman because I'm still conflicted on that one. Batfleck was awesome. Restore the Snyderverse. Colleen? Is that you again? How exactly does a brain disorder show Batman memories of things only Joker could remember? Joker is just an hallucination brought on by a brain disease after all. These aren't the exact events of Barbara's paralysis. This is Batman's understanding of the events as relayed to him by Barbara. Or are you implying that Barbara wouldn't remember the night Joker broke into her house and shot her spine? Notice how Joker's hat says, flashback, and Barbara is wearing the exact same jacket as tonight. This isn't meant to be taken literally. Heck, that's why Joker makes the joke about showing a little spine. There's absolutely no way he'd actually know he shot her directly in the spine if this was a perfect recollection. Candy grab! Aren't you technically still Batgirl at this point in time? Why didn't you just attack Joker and take the gun instead of running away? And why run to the opposite end of the room like that was a safe zone? There's no escape path there. Honestly, how did you get the job as Batgirl? Again, not meant to be taken literally. In most interpretations of this scene, Joker sticks the gun to Barbara's stomach and fires while Gordon watches from the background. This is an artistic interpretation meant to show Batman what happens to his allies. In The Killing Joke, which this is a reference to, Joker shoots and photographs Barbara to drive Gordon insane. Here it's just a reference to that comic without all that annoying subtext. That tends to be a reoccurring sin in the Arkham games. So, you admit to knowing about The Killing Joke origin and take issue with a game taking creative liberties with it. These aren't the actual events of The Killing Joke, it's just a hallucination meant to show Batman what happens to his allies. Yes, I said this for the third time in the row, and yes, I'm very mad at this sin. Memory landmine. What, what is the sin or joke meant to be here? Seriously, can someone help me out? You would think with that metal build quality, that phone could take a fall. See what I mean from earlier? I'll do this on my own. Since when have the police in Gotham ever been able to do anything on their own? Oh, I don't know, maybe evacuating the entire city population 6.4 million in 24 hours? Eddie, sweetie, you confuse me with Robin. The big guy and I aren't all that close. Even Catwoman thinks Batman and Robin are, uh, you know, not that that's a bad thing. It's just funny. Honestly, I'm really confused in how gay jokes are going to work going forward now. I would say this is a barely funny joke if you didn't miss the fact that Selina is saying that villains tend to capture Robin because he's Batman's sidekick. Shouldn't Batman be dead? Or the very least out of commission? He just took a bullet in the kidney. And, wait for it, he treats it. It's almost like skipping over scenes without letting them play in their entirety is a lazy way to make sins. Batman's in the control room. Show him what happens when he messes with my scene. So let me get this straight. You had Batman dead to rights, but decide to leave him on the ground and send in your goons to fight him instead. Yeah, you should stop bragging about how much you know Batman works. I'm guessing he has a good idea of how you operate at this point since you're following all the cliches. It's almost like Scarecrow hasn't given him the go-ahead to kill Batman. Ever think about that and wonder why he suddenly tries to actively kill Batman later in the story? He sends goons in to stall him while he makes his getaway with Oracle. They aren't meant to kill him. I'll tell you, just stop! You would think the Arkham Knight would have informed his men that Batman doesn't kill, meaning this is just an empty threat. So, you're saying you wouldn't cave under the pressure of a literal 50-ton tank even knowing your aggressor doesn't kill? Okay then. What is Penguin paying these guys? They stand around in a room full of guns and watch as Batman beats up their boss. Yeah, it's almost like some of them grab guns? I know Batman was hallucinating that he was attacked by a gang of Jokers when in reality it was the Arkham Knight's men, but why didn't they kill Batman when they had the chance? He's right there on the ground where you left him! You have guns! Shoot him! Keep up, goddammit! They aren't going to kill him! They're stalling him! Batman just stuck a harpoon in Stag's chest and it didn't kill him. This is what a harpoon looks like. And this is the Batclaw. One of these things is not like the other. There's nowhere to run. Who said anything about running? But that's what you're doing. You're running away from Batman on a helicopter. Just because you added an explosion doesn't change that. There's a difference between running and flying. Just ask Flash and Superman. 
Sir, Scarecrow is broadcasting across Gotham. You need to see this. He is? Just a second ago, he was being flown by a helicopter on the outside of the cloudburst. Where did he find time to make it to a recording studio? Maybe he just had a pre-recorded message? Notice how all of Scarecrow's messages like these are in a black room with a distortion effect on his voice. That crap takes time, bro. He probably recorded all of them before invading the city. Hey, it's the same room where Scarecrow held Poison Ivy. That monitor setup is still stupid. Though it does make slightly more sense now since Scarecrow lured Batman here this time. Sending the exact same thing twice for literally no reason. Scarecrow has the means to engulf the entire city in fear, Toxin. Oh no, not the empty city devoid of innocent civilians. Pay attention to the plot, dammit. Scarecrow is showing the world the city Batman couldn't save by engulfing it in fear, Toxin. He doesn't care who it affects because nobody will be able to come back. And I should trust you. Why? Because without your help, every plant in this city will die. Because gas that makes people afraid of things is also a defoliant. Hmm, it's almost like that's part of the fear toxin's makeup. Maybe pay attention to the fact that ivy and her plants are dying while sucking up all the gas. What do you think? Man, you cut them back, built over them. Stop them from reaching the sun. And somehow survived civil engineering plans during the hundred or more years that Gotham has existed. That's just called preservation. Have you heard of Central Park in New York City? You don't have to do this on your own, Bruce. I can help you. It's under control. We need that antidote. Batman really doesn't want Robin in this game. Let's hope this trend continues. I don't want to explain this one again. You know why. More impossible Joker memories. In this one, they basically spell it out for you that the Arkham Knight is Jason Todd. These aren't memories. These are hallucinations of events Batman assumes Jason underwent while in Joker's captivity. The only one that is a memory is the final one because it's the film Joker sent him. He's got the Joker in him. They all have. That means they're mine. I'm taking them. Now that would be highly irresponsible of me to allow that to happen. Robin, you talk like the biggest tool I have ever seen. This is why no one wants you in the game. He's a kid. What do you expect? What the hell are you doing? The right thing. You're doing the right thing, Batman. No one wants Robin in this game any more than he's already been. Okay, will you just stop with all the Robin hate? If you don't like Robin, whatever. You can have your own opinion, but don't keep blasting it in our faces when the attempted jokes aren't even slightly funny. Fear Toxin apparently disables electronics now. Is there anything this stuff doesn't do? Considering gas masks can't even protect people from it? Yeah, it's not hard to assume it could disable electronics. And considering how dense the cloud is, yeah, it would disable electronics. It's like getting your car blasted in a sandstorm. This scene where Scarecrow's fear toxin covers Gotham is pretty cool. I'll give it that. But if his fear gas is so dense that it can't rise above a few stories, how was he planning to spread it across the eastern seaboard earlier at Ace Chemicals? Also, gassing this mostly empty city accomplished absolutely nothing. Firstly, the height the gas reaches is irrelevant. Stuff can spread horizontally better than vertically because of a little thing known as gravity. Second, you get the point of this sin by now. My plants are too weak. Then tell me where to find another. There's a tree buried deep beneath Founders Island. The Miyagani people called her Ayana. Earlier, Ivy said there aren't any plants left like her. Then we need another. There aren't any left like her. Then points Batman to a plan just like her. Maybe because there aren't any left on the surface. Just a thought. She said this before pointing Batman to the plant on Miyagani. This clearly means they don't exist on the surface anymore, but are deep below ground. Nature always wins. Character arc words, since that's exactly what she told Batman at the beginning of the game. And you're sitting this because... Character arcs are literally the foundation of fiction. Tell me about this broadcast. Wish I could, sir, but it's on a SWAT channel. Encrypted. You hear me? It's Jim! If Gordon wanted to radio for assistance, why did he do it over an encrypted SWAT channel that no one at GPD had the encryption keys for? Firstly, it's the GCPD. Get it right. Second, he put it over a SWAT channel so none of the militia could pick it up. If they picked up he was on their trail, he'd have been captured a lot earlier. You didn't think I was gone, did you? No, no, you knew better. You get knocked down, you pick yourself up again. Did the Arkham Knight just reference Chumbawamba? Bad pop culture reference is bad. Combining two pistols front to back would not make a very good anything, let alone a sniper rifle. It's pretty obvious these are not normal pistols. Have you ever seen a pixel retract and insert into another? I thought not. It's not too late. We can fix this. Together. 
Even the former Robin doesn't want to be Robin in this game. Gah! It wouldn't be a Batman story without a visit to Crime Alley so Batman could have an emotional wank over his dead parents. Sinning Crime Alley. That's worth these many sins. In hindsight, walking through a place called Crime Alley when you're a billionaire probably wasn't the smartest thing for Bruce's parents to do. Sinning Batman's origin story in a video called Everything Wrong with Arkham Knight. That's worth these many sins. After everyone slammed the last Call of Duty game for having a press F to pay respects button, I'm surprised no one's mentioned that this game does it. And guess what? Arkham City did it too. Three years before Advanced Warfare. Get with the program, mate. See that? That's a reference to the opening of Arkham Asylum. I bet you're impressed with our ability to reference things we ourselves made. This is what George Lucas would call poetry. It rhymes. Calling back to the beginning of your story is one of the best ways to wrap it up. And considering this is actually a reference to one of Scarecrow's nightmare sequences in Asylum, you're also just wrong. Isn't that Vicki Vale reporting on Batman's unmasking? And isn't she the girlfriend of Bruce Wayne, judging from the voice message she left on his office phone? Shouldn't she be a little more taken back by all this? This is called being a reporter. Vicky is a pretty shallow person, judging by her appearance in City. So she's going to take the story above her personal feelings for Bruce. Batman's suit can stop bullets, but not hypodermic syringes. Maybe because Scarecrow is injecting a part of his suit that wouldn't have stopped bullets anyway. You know, the points Jason specifically pointed out to the militia to aim for. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Cartoon reference. Now you just have to be impressed with our referencing abilities. Sinning I am Batman. That's worth infinity sins. Goodbye, Joker. No, Bruce! Don't leave me! Apparently all it takes to cure yourself of an incurable neurological disease is willpower. I guess all the people who've died of Kruzfeldt Yakov disease just didn't want it bad enough. This is Batman overcoming his demons and the effects of the fear toxin. So yeah, all you need to overcome that is sheer willpower. So a beating in that little speech Batman gave you was all it took to overcome years of psychological trauma and win you back to his side, huh? You'd be surprised how far a simple apology can go for some people. Plus, you clearly didn't listen to Jason's audio tapes in this game. For those of you watching who also haven't, I highly recommend you do because it's some pretty emotional stuff. Anyway, when Jason kidnapped Barbara, they had a little time to talk unmasked, and Barbara nearly convinced Jason to stop. It was Bruce truly being sorry for what happened to Jason that allowed him to finally forgive. New trilogy baiting. Considering it's been six years and Rocksteady is working on Suicide Squad now, yeah, no, there's no new trilogy coming, unfortunately. Me stuck deep inside you.